Read then. Shall we just nut this heat on straight away? <laughs> Why do these exist? All right, mobile workstations. Who buys these? Why would you? Why would you buy one when, right, right, this is the new Dell Precision 7550 15 inch mobile workstation from Dell. And in here is the most powerful mobile Xeon processor that Intel have ever produced. That sounds like a good reason to buy one, doesn't it? It's got the professional Goliath 8 core Xeon W10885M, except that CPU is literally exactly the same CPU in every sense of the word to the gaming grade Core i9-10885H and the 10980HK, except for the Xeon in here supports ECC memory, meaning in terms of actual gross CPU power, that makes this Dell exactly the same as this, 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 and this. All right, the CPU is the same as what's in a gaming laptop. Right, got it. But it's the Quadro graphics in here that makes these things like mobile powerhouse beasts and all that kind of stuff, isn't it? Right, well, yeah. Well, this has got the Turing based Quadro RTX 3000 in it, which is exactly the same TU106 chip as the mobile GeForce RTX 2070, which, which, is, which was no slouch. Mate, that's nothing to be ashamed about. RTX 2070 is an awesome card. However, the Quadro RTX 3000, even though it's exactly the same chip as the RTX 2070, the Quadro has not more lower, and I mean significantly lower clock speeds than the GeForce. It's got two gigs less video RAM than the GeForce. It's got lower memory bandwidth, fewer tensor cores, and fewer ray tracing cores than the GeForce RTX 2070. Hmm, what about RAM though? Ah, yes, memory, right, well, Unlike almost, if not all, gaming laptops, you can actually put in the full 128 gigs of RAM that the Core i9 and the Xeon platform supports into this Dell laptop, but mate, you just wouldn't. What? What's that? You, what, you would? Well, well, all right, well, mate, if, if, you're, if you're genuinely doing something that legitimately calls for 128 gigs of RAM, and you would actually spec that in. And by legitimately, I don't mean generating a mesh on on a primitive kind of my first modeled box with a pattern I, in all seriousness i like linus and i respect what he's doing but that video looked like it was packed with inexperienced errors that was a bit of a mess it was the video where he showed this laptop consuming 128 gigs of ram doing a solidworks simulation uh, flow simulation that was not a 128 gig data set mate that was likely a memory leak or poor model optimization just don't watch that video and come away thinking that you need a 13 grand laptop to run CFD <laughs> because engineers, trust me, have been running CFD for years already on exponentially more complex data sets than that. And they've been doing it just fine without 128 gigs of RAM or a 13 grand laptop anyway. So uh, now is not the time to get into who does and doesn't need vast amount of RAM. Point being, SolidWorks' own website says you need 30, well, the recommended memory is 32 gigs for their flow simulation. But the point being, it's laptops like this, mobile workstations, that allow you to put 128 gigs of RAM. So if you do need that kind of memory, then you do need one of these, but you will pay for it. Right, what about ECC memory? Ah, yes, well, the Xeons in here support both ECC and non-ECC memory, but the thing is, mate, the non-ECC memory is cheaper, which means if someone else is buying the laptop for you, like a, a technically challenged procurement team, you can bet your bollocks with Barn Dance that you, the laptop you're gonna end up with will have non-ECC RAM in it because it was the cheaper option on the spec sheet. But if you're buying it right, you've got a choice to make because non-ECC RAM can run at faster frequencies. So what's it gonna be? Are you gonna go for better theoretical performance from your RAM with non-ECC RAM at faster frequencies? Or are you gonna choose ECC RAM at slower frequencies and then just kind of hope that ECC RAM is just doing something for you in the background? Let's just pause there, right? So you're saying here that the Xeon in here is no more powerful than the i9 in a gaming laptop. You're saying the Quadro is less powerful than the equivalent GeForce card. You're saying RAM is RAM, doesn't make anything go faster. And frankly, you can actually put faster frequencies into gaming laptops that are actually purebred gaming laptops. So please do nut this heat on. <laughs> like why wouldn't you just buy a gaming laptop? Why do these exist? Who in their right mind would actually buy one of these? I do. This one's mine. <laughs> this is this is mine. This is the mobile workstation that I, me, specified and issued into our significantly sized teams of electrical and mechanical engineers for use within subsea engineering. So at this point, you'd be forgiven for, for wondering if I'm, if I'm having some kind of split personality meltdown or do I just hate the engineers that I work with? <laughs> like, what's going on, mate? After everything you've said, why the hell would you choose to put these into a business uh, knowing 
that they're less powerful than a cheaper gaming laptop. Why would you do that? Right, okay, for starters, these, the Dell Precision Mobile Workstations, were actually significantly cheaper than an equivalent gaming laptop because, mate, that price on Dell's website that everyone stares at in, in awe, literally nobody pays anywhere near that price. That price is a load of hee-haw, mate. You can fart down the phone to the Dell sales rep whilst singing I fornicated with your mother to the tune of Baby Shark on loop and they'll still give you a discount. Right? Nobody pays that price. But I've already done probably at this point several dedicated videos on this topic and talked about it in various Q and A's, but I don't expect everyone to understand or agree with me on this. And I, and I don't care if I'm honest, this is how it is. If you're buying a laptop or a system for yourself, buy whatever you want, buy whatever the hell you want. I do. I build my own systems in here for me, DIY, put the parts together, build whatever I want. If you're responsible though, for buying a laptop or a system for an employee, that laptop is going to be a company asset. The system is going to be a tool to enable an employee to do their job as effectively as possible. If the ongoing operation of a system affects business continuity, then you buy a workstation. You buy a mobile workstation or a fixed desktop workstation. You're more than welcome to argue with that between yourselves, but not to me. That's absolutely not a fit debate. That's how I operate. That's how I've always operated. And it has never, ever let me down. And in the event of a theoretical potential system failure, right? That could potentially cause a negative impact on the business. I can go to anyone in that business and say, you have the best, most reliable and support platform that money can buy. And then any failure that might have happened would probably be down to an unfortunate, rare component failure that just happens, right? You know, rather than someone piping up and saying, hey, hang on a minute, wait a minute, why have we got these cheap gaming laptops? Why have we been given these? These aren't supported by our CAD application. So keeping this as short as possible, having a laptop that scores a few more points in a benchmark tool fades out like a fart in the wind compared to uh, reliability and support. And just wait a second, if you're about to write a comment about how you've had a bad time with the Dell laptop, just stop and consider, right, how that possibly might have panned out if instead of contacting Dell to get a replacement part or a replacement laptop, and it was for work, you've had to instead contact an e-tailer an online e-tailer who sold you a, I don't know, a, a gigabyte laptop, for example, right? It would have been a completely different story. Wait, 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 wait a second though, mate. It's how, to me, it sounds like, mate, you're completely disregarding the need for an employee to have a fast laptop so that you can put something safe in and cover your own backside. Does that sound fair, am I right? All right, look, providing that we're talking about this very laptop with the mobile Xeon 10 885M, which is what I've bought, versus something like a mobile i9 10980HK. The margins we're talking about here are imperceptible. Some applications differ to others, but for Autodesk software, which is what this is bought for, uh, like Inventor, Fusion 360, Revit, even the likes of SolidWorks, right? Anything that's like Parasolid based or Shape Manager based modeling kernels. The fact that the Xeon in here is identical to the Core i9s means that the performance difference between this mobile workstation and a gaming laptop for almost every day-to-day -day task that engineers would be doing with it is negligible bordering on completely unnoticeable. If they had the mobile workstation and the gaming laptop side by side and were to do their work side by side, they'd probably have to grab a stopwatch and then time the differences between the two. And that's kind of the margins we're talking about here. However, one of the differences or the, the tweaks that workstation vendors do uh, is they enforce default tighter thermal controls over their workstation systems. They Because they don't want their workstations to run so hot that you can't touch them or you can't put them on their laps or they get blue screens from thermal or power issues. Because after all, the typical end user of, of a system like this, they've got no clue about CPUs and clock frequencies and all that kind of stuff. So you may see these systems running at slightly lower frequencies whilst at full load or core boosts, for example, but single core performance shouldn't be too much affected by those kind of restrictions. But mate, again, I'm shouting at myself. <laughs> Didn't you say, that the Quadro graphics in here was lower across the board, wasn't it? Just significantly slower graphics card. So aren't the engineers getting much lower graphics performance? Uh, yes, I did say that, uh, but no, not necessarily. You see, the, unless you're working on something like 3D Studio Max, Maya, VRED, media and entertainment stuff, ProVis, ArchVis, game design, anything that needs brute force GPU horsepower and masses of video RAM, the vast majority of professional CAD applications just don't run off the graphics card, meaning that the, the, the fact that this has got that quadro in means absolutely nothing in terms of visual performance or quality. 
So yes, the Quadro in here is less powerful than a GeForce RTX 2070 or 2080 Super. I could have given them a faster graphics card in a gaming laptop, but engineers using Autodesk Inventor or Ansys or Fusion 360 or Revit, they, they won't ever utilize that graphics card. What will be utilized though, and engaged all day, every day, is that Quadro driver whilst their programs are running. The driver won't make it go any quicker. Or does it? Or does it right? I'm interjecting here. Uh, this video that you're watching actually went on YouTube and I was about to make it live and I watched it back and I thought, ah, I need to add something into this point. So I, I left it there saying the quadro drivers don't make anything run faster. Uh, you know, they, they don't, but there is a perception that they do. So I need to uh, just give a bit of context to that. Specifically talking about the likes of SpecView Perf, which is a benchmark suite that you may or may not be aware of, but it's a benchmark suite that benchmarks the likes of Siemens NX, PTC Creo, SolidWorks, Max, Maya, a whole bunch of other applications. That benchmark suite emphasizes and highlights a disparity between Quadro and GeForce cards that raises some questions. So I've cherry picked an example here from the Gamers Nexus YouTube channel. They do an awesome job of this kind of stuff. They are highly, highly credible. Uh, and very experienced with this stuff. I highly recommend them. This is a textbook example of that. This is a Siemens NX run. Pay particular close attention to the Quadro P2000 line in here. In Siemens NX, the Quadro P2000 pulled 183 FPS on a 1080p run. Scroll your eyes down a wee tad. The RTX 2080 Ti pulled a mere 20 FPS on a 1080p run. Mate, how is that possible? How is that even possible? Objectively, right? If you just take the two products, the Quadro P2000 and the RTX 2080 Ti, and just observe them objectively, the RTX 2080 Ti is in a different league completely and entirely to the Quadro P2000. The P2000 is an older generation, it's an older architecture. It's on Pascal, whereas the RTX 2080 Ti is Turing. The Quadro P2000 is the GP106 chip, which is a variant of the GTX 1060. It's exactly the same chip as used in the gaming GTX 1060 card. So if you were to do gaming benchmarks and put the GTX 1060 up against the RTX 2080 Ti, mate, they're not even comparable. The, the, the RTX 2080 Ti would be up here on a chart, right? 1060 would be right the way down here. Not even, they wouldn't even fit on the same chart. That's how far apart they are in terms of raw brute force GPU horsepower. So how is it possible that in this CAD application, the P2000 is, it's, it's flip reversed. It's completely flip reversed. Well, the Quadro driver did not make the P2000 go faster than it's capable of going, right? The drivers can't, you know, they don't inject something into the hardware to make it spin faster than it can spin, right? They don't spin, there's no moving parts, but apart from the fans, it doesn't do that, right? To me, and I'm not an expert on Siemens NX. I'm not an expert on Solid. I'm an expert on Autodesk and I know how Autodesk software works, but not Siemens NX. But to me, that looks like Siemens are possibly, potentially, artificially slowing down their software when it detects a gaming card. Because the RTX 2080 Ti doesn't pull 20 FPS at 1080p on anything, right? It's, an, it's way above that. So that looks like the software is throttling the card when it detects it. Uh, and when the Quadro's installed and the Quadro drivers are, are all implemented, it just unlocks it and it just runs as it should run. You know, maybe maybe they've got a partnership with NVIDIA where they've said to NVIDIA, look, we'll we'll do what we can to, to make sure our end users are using your professional cards. Maybe they've got some kind of corporate agreement there so that they're, they're stopping or they're trying to, trying to stop their customer base from using gaming cards to get them onto the professional cards because NVIDIA wants professional users to use Quadro's. That's... If they don't like people in engineering or in you know any professional walk of life using gaming cards, so maybe they've got a deal there. I don't know, or maybe they're doing it for support. You see a similar trend with SolidWorks, not as extreme, but there is a similar uh, similar trend in SolidWorks. But yeah, that's another reason why mobile workstations exist. Uh, it's possibly a, a, an artificial reason. I'd be a bit upset if I had to buy or I felt like I was being forced into buying a mobile workstation because my software of choice was artificially throttling my application on the detection of a, of a game of gaming hardware but that is that is how it is <laughs> well, arguably uh, these days that quadro driver is no more reliable than the very well done geforce drivers but in the event that we 
do or might have an issue with graphics and we need help from Autodesk or Nvidia, neither of those guys will entertain us on the GeForce platform. And frankly, I don't blame them for that stance. So this is just a, a classic case of picking the right hardware for the situation. Uh, and this situation being, we've got, you might have a multi-million pound business to run. These laptops, they're key to that. We've got employees using Autodesk 3D CAD software needing reliability and support. So it's about putting the right tool in for the job. So for me, yes, yeah, I could have issued out gaming laptops into the business. These are no more expensive than the gaming laptops. Uh, they were slightly cheaper, roughly around the same price point. But for this situation, uh, the, the net output from, from gaming laptops would have been no, not much more at all than from the Dell Precision Mobile workstations. You know, uh, the Xeon CPU in here competes with the Core i9s. The graphics has to be Quadro when it's going into an enterprise setting. Dell, you don't have to go with Dell. You can go with HP, but they have dedicated support tiers for enterprise sales. The hardware itself in these mobile workstations, the chassis, the materials and all that, they're the best of the best. They're the best that they have to offer. They go into this tier. So at the end of the day, I can confidently hand this over to an employee knowing that they're getting one of the best performing laptops on the most reliable platform. So just to wrap this up, I appreciate this is uh, an intricate and multifaceted discussion. What's right for me isn't always right for you. If you use something like VRED or Unreal Engine or even Blender, right, as your main application, the entire conversation changes and shifts is, is you need to potentially look to and focus on different priorities. If your line of work is exclusively dealing with 20 gig point cloud scans, again, conversation changes as it does if you're a solo contractor or a student. You buy some, you buy one of these if you're a student, right? You know, you, it's about picking the right tool for the job and the situation. Uh, that's why I feel that these videos are needed. There isn't a single right answer for which system sh you should buy. It's all about the situation, where it's going, who it's going to, and what is it gonna mostly be doing. So that'll do, that's all I've got for now. Initially, this video was gonna be like a full review with benchmarks and specs, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, but as per normal, I ended up hyper-focusing on this one topic far too much, made this bit far too long. Uh, so I'll do the review in a separate video. So if you're not subscribed, get subscribed for that review. Coming soon, that's going to have Revit benchmarks in, Inventor, V-Red, Keyshot, and also how this laptop stacks up against the MSI GS66 Stealth, which was essentially the gaming equivalent in terms of specs to this Dell Precision Mobile Workstation. So get subscribed for that if you want to see that. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you found this interesting. I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.